Hello and uh, welcome back to another video from uh, trainingright.com. In this uh, video, I will be very quickly showing you how we could bind to an XML data source and uh, execute our tests. Um, in the previous uh, videos, uh, we have covered uh, the CSV and the Excel. So this time what I have done is uh, I, um, I have created the XML document, a data document, and then I am um, binding uh, to this test that we have been um, using all along uh, to that XML source. So let me start off with the XML file first. Um, so um, in order to do that, um, you uh, can create any, um, um, you know, uh, uh, XML file using um, any of the tools. Uh, there's so many utilities out there, so many tools out there that will ha help you create uh, data documents for the XML. Uh, but um, in this uh, scenario, I just uh, have uh, kept it pretty simple. So I've used uh, the Notepad and I have created that um, uh, data. Um, in the upcoming videos, when we get into some uh, intense coverage of the databases and uh, the other things, um, I will show you some of the tools uh, that you could be using to, to create uh, what is called the XML uh, data if you have to. Okay, so um, in this uh, case, uh, we are doing it uh, using Notepad. So what I have done is, uh, for those of you folks who know what um, HTML is, uh, picking up XML is going to be extremely easy because uh, XML is nothing but uh, tags. Uh, in HTML, you have uh, predefined tags. You have tags like uh, head, body, uh, title, uh, table, and fonts, and uh, uh, image, uh, and paragraph, and stuff like that. Um, here, um, to such uh, predefined tags are not there so you have to go and then create your own tag so what I have done again is uh, I created uh, that XML file and kept it in that uh, folder so if you have watched this series and if you have seen uh, the previous videos then you know why we are saving it into the um, into this uh, bin and into this debug was explained uh, so I it just uh, now I created this uh, login uh, test data as the XML document in fact um, uh, while doing all that, I was uh, recording, but uh, my for some reason the recording did not uh, uh, come out uh, right. Uh, it was all black uh, screen, so I am re-recording this um, again. So you might not see me doing it because uh, that recording did not come out right. So, but anyway, so here is uh, what I had uh, created. So this is the uh, this is the XML uh, document. Um, so it starts off with, uh, with the XML as the um, as the root node. So every XML document have uh, a, a single root node, uh, and uh, in this case, uh, it is XML. Um, there's one uh, very important thing uh, I want you folks to um, you know pay attention to, and that is uh, XML. Um, while you're dealing with XML, it has to adhere to the uh, rules and regulations. And one of the rules of XML is you cannot have more than one um, uh, root element. So that's that. The other rules uh, are it is case sensitive so you cannot have like an uppercase X uh, here and then not close it with the uppercase X so it, they have to match the, the the case has to match and the other things is um, um, you when you open a tag you have to close a tag um, so um, the whole purpose of creating this XML document is uh, to make sure that we are able to pass the data so the data that we are passing is the browser type and the uh, home phone number and the password and uh, once it reads that from that XML file uh, here is our little logic in here and we are saying that if that uh, browser type happens to be Chrome then it should invoke uh, it should start a Chrome browser if it is Internet Explorer it should start an Internet Explorer browser and if it is Firefox it should uh, start a Firefox browser so I got to make sure that in my um, XML I at least have minimum at least like three uh, records um, so that I could um, um, check all those three scenarios so um, here are my uh, records. So this is this is the data row is like uh, one of um, the. Uh, this can be named anything. I I named it as a data row um, because it, it it sort of like makes sense that it's a, a row of data. And in there, these are the these are the fields uh, right that I am trying to extract into my code. And if you see in here. That's the browser uh, type. So I have to have an element of the browser type, and then um, and then this is the value of that. So um, every every data row uh, will have uh, 
my browser and my um, customer home phone number and my password likewise I'll have uh, those uh, three because uh, the reason I, I say three is because uh, I am testing it for different browsers so I gotta make sure that at least I have three I could have like uh, uh, you know 3,000 in here or 300 or or 30 or whatever be the number I could have uh, the minimum I want to have is at least three so that I could test all the scenarios uh, for uh, Chrome being one this being second and Firefox being third all right okay so now that I have that um, so I uh, I save it uh, in the proper place and then I, sh I should go ahead and then have this uh, as my data source now um, let me just uh, bring it up uh, in notepad and then show it to you it'll be a little bigger uh, for us um, um, to hang on uh, here okay so let me uh, go uh, step by step to show you what it is. Um, as you know that uh, the data source uh, um, as an attribute, um, it'll have uh, certain, uh, certain parameters. So one of the parameters is we are trying to mention here that it's an XML. So the, da the data source is all about XML, meaning that whatever we are binding to is an XML file. Okay, so that's that. Um, compared to in the past, we were saying that this is a CSV file, and if you see here, um, this was a CSV, so Microsoft Visual Studio Test Tools data source dot CSV. Um, and here, data source is, uh, it's an Excel, uh, so we have, uh, so here, we are saying that it's an XML. Okay, very good, that's that. The next thing is, where is it um, being saved? So it is going to be in the output directory. This data directory uh, corresponds to that output directory. And where is the output directory? Again, I was uh, explaining you in a lot more details in the previous videos about uh, uh, it being in the bin folder and in the debug uh, only because of the settings of our project. So once the project is totally complete and uh, if we are about to release, I could I could change that and then put everything into the release folder. Right now we are working, um, you know, so I'm putting everything into the debug. And so that's, that's where uh, this part comes in. So data directory, right, and uh, this is, um, your customer login test data. Um, then um, in that, uh, we have all those as data rows, right? So that's the data rows. All my iterations, uh, right, are data rows. Uh, and uh, we could go sequential, we could go random. Um, as uh, we have seen in the past, we have been doing it at random. So this time I left it as sequential. And uh, the deployment item is, uh, um, your customer login uh, data dot XML and it's a test method so that's all you need right so the um, to summarize again um, you have to create that XML document and uh, then you have to have this data source and that's basically all uh, you need to know at this time okay so when you right click and run your test at this time it should uh, pretty much um, you know um, work and there it is so this is the Internet Explorer opening up uh, typing that uh, username and password and uh, uh, so the next time if uh, if I did everything right so it should uh, invoke uh, the next time um, a different browser maybe a Google Chrome if that was the second um, you know record in our data rows of our XML uh, document so that's what it is going to open with and uh, Google Chrome and then finally it'll open it with Firefox so um, this is uh, uh, the continuation of our series where we have been looking into different ways of binding uh, to a test case uh, as a source of your data. Um, we have uh, looked into we have looked into the possibility of uh, um, connecting to um, connecting to Excel. We looked into connecting to um, to the CSV files. In this one, we looked into connecting um, to um, uh, XML. And in the upcoming videos, I'll be showing you as how to connect to a database. Uh, and we'll also be looking into how to connect to uh, a manual test case that was created using uh, Microsoft Test Manager, MTM. And, uh, uh, and in that, uh, if that is... Uh, uh, stored in let's say a TFS team foundation server uh, and if that uh, test case manual test case is uh, 
uh, have been parameterized with a bunch of data. Um, so how you could execute it from coded UI. Well, that will be pretty interesting. So we'll be looking into that as well. So in my upcoming videos, I will be discussing about the databases and uh, you know uh, everything else that uh, can be um, can be considered as a source of data to do our data-driven testing. All right. Okay. See you soon with a, uh, another video. Thank you.